3D printers have had many advancements over the years, but the evolution of extruders is something that I've been really excited about. My first 3D printer in 2014 had an extruder with a single brass gear and idler bearing, which was really common for the time. It was actually fairly similar to what's on the original CR10, but in a direct drive format. For slow printing, it got the job done, but for flexibles or if you were trying to print a bit quicker, it was less than ideal. Fast forward to today and we have many dual gear direct drive extruders that are compact and lightweight, have constrained filament paths, and they pack some serious extrusion force. One that I've really been enjoying is the Orbiter V2. This extruder was given to me by Jason from LDO Last Murph, and it sat until I installed it on my Mercury 1.1 build. It has been an absolute champ, so much so that it needs its own video. So today, we're going to be diving into the Orbiter V2. We'll cover its history, what makes it special, go over its specs, and upgrade my Orbiter V2 with the Orbiter filament runout sensor that has some sweet quality of life improvements. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before just diving into the specs of this extruder, I think it's important to know a bit of its origin story. The Orbiter extruder was designed by Dr. Robert Larynx, an engineer with a PhD in brushless motor control electronics living in Romania. Like many around 2017, his first 3D printer was the ANET A8, which he quickly decided needed upgrades. Next, he designed his own Core XY 3D printer called the Mach Cube. After not being thrilled with current extruders for fast speeds, he decided to see what he can come up with himself. This led to lots of research and experimentation with different gear configurations and ultimately the release of what would be named the Orbiter back in 2020, which you can find on Thingiverse. The year after its initial release saw numerous tweaks and quality of life improvements. The Orbiter was released for anybody to make with a non-commercial license and no intent of being sold, but this changed when some vendors began selling their own clone versions of the Orbiter. Ultimately, this had a positive outcome as it led to Dr. Larynx reaching out to LDO to manufacture the entire extruder. Up until that point, LDO had solely been manufacturing the stepper motor for the Orbiter. LDO is currently the sole manufacturer that has a license agreement to produce and sell the Orbiter. The creator gets a small kickback for sales, but intentionally set this amount to be smaller in order to make the extruder more affordable. There is a 1.5 version of the Orbiter that transitioned it from an SLS printed body over to being injection molded, but the current version that I am using, which is the latest version as of recording, was released in 2021 and is the Orbiter 2.0. For anyone interested in finding out more about the history, I will have a link to the story section of the Orbiter Projects website in the description below. Unlike the previous versions, the completely redesigned Orbiter 2.0 is the first to use non-off-the-shelf components. Although it did mean it was no longer a DIY extruder, it did allow for some advancements that could only be had through custom machining. These included size and weight reduction, a metal filament guide, and an increase in extrusion force. The Orbiter 2.0 uses specially made hardened Bontic gears that are 11 millimeters in length and 12 millimeters in diameter. Unlike the eight millimeter diameter of BMG gears, the added width gives more contact with the filament, which increases the extrusion force without deforming the filament. Lots of stepper motor testing was also done before the release of the 2.0, which led to using a different LDO motor that increased the extrusion force by up to 40%. It is a 7.5 to 1 gear ratio using a compact planetary gear system. The 2.0 also went away with the plastic filament exit guide, which was replaced with stainless steel. This has a much tighter filament path, which is great for printing with flexibles, and the stainless steel is a much better option for printing with abrasives as well. Even the tensioning screw was redesigned to have a retaining feature that prevents the spring and washer from being able to fly off. This may sound like a small deal, but anyone that's used a BMG or really any of the Voron extruders knows that if you're adjusting the tensioner and it happens to pop off, the spring and the washer go flying. As mentioned, I've been running the Orbiter V2 on my Mercury 1.1, which has a modified EVA 2.4 toolhead paired with the A3D Revo. It's been an incredibly reliable extruder and I'm planning on upgrading the Revo to a Revo High Flow to see how much more I can push the printer. Some months ago, I saw mention of a filament runout sensor for the Orbiter extruder, which initially I didn't really think much of. But with how much thought went into the actual extruder, I should have known that it wouldn't just be a standard filament runout sensor. 
It consists of a PCB and housing that uses a steel ball that pushes into a micro switch to trigger that filament has been inserted. There is a status LED and diffuser on top that is red when filament isn't detected, green when it is, and yellow when filament is detected and the button on top is pressed. This pairs with a set of macros designed for either clipper or RepRap firmware that allow for filament unloading and loading automation. The installation for the runout is fairly simple. Start by removing the retention clip and PTFE collet from the top of the orbiter. Then remove the two screws going from the orbiter into the stepper motor. Now we can push the filament sensor down into the top of the orbiter until it's flush with the top of the extruder. The sensor includes two slightly longer screws for the added thickness of the sensor arms that then need to be installed. Then reinstall the extruder with the sensor back onto your printer. The next step is wiring. There are four wires for the runout sensor, which are ground, voltage, filament sensor, and filament unload. For voltage, you can use 3.3 or 5 volts, but will want to bridge a jumper on the board if you're using 3.3 volts. In my case, I'm using CAN bus, so I cut the included wiring harness down, crimped the wires, and hooked them up to open pins on the board. Hopefully it was just a one-off freak thing, but the initial runout sensor that I purchased off of AliExpress was actually defective and it caused hours of troubleshooting. I believe it was a genuine part, but I ended up ordering a replacement from here in the States from KB3D. It showed up in a couple of days, and as soon as I plugged it in, everything worked right away. Just to be safe after wiring the hardware before doing anything with firmware, I recommend powering on the printer just to verify that the hardware is behaving the way it should be. And that's really simple to do. When you power it on, when there's no filament, it should light up red. As soon as you insert filament, it should turn green. And while filament's inserted, if you press the button, it should turn yellow. Mine did not do that initially, and that should have been a sign that something was incorrect and it would have saved me a lot of headaches. So again, just make sure that the LED is responding the way it should be based off of the filament status. I'm running Clipper on my Mercury 1.1, so we will quickly run through the couple of steps on the firmware side. Luckily, this is a simple process thanks to the created config file available on the Orbiter project website. Start by downloading the Orbiter Sensor v2.2 config file and uploading it to your Clipper files in your web interface. Then open your printer.cfg file and add include Orbiter Sensor v2.2.cfg so that we can reference the macros in there. You'll also want to add min underscore extrude underscore temp under your extruder section for the macros to work correctly. This is the lowest value that you want your printer to be able to run an extrude command. 180 Celsius is recommended and should be fine for most. Then save your printer.cfg and open the orbiter sensor.cfg file. All that we need to do here is update the pins for the sensor and button to whatever pins we used on our board. For me, this was PB6 and PB5 on my EBB36 CAN board, but this will be different for everyone depending on both the board and pins that you choose. Then restart Clipper and enjoy your filament runout sensor. Whenever you insert filament, it will be detected, grabbed, and pulled a few millimeters before the printer automatically heats up the hot end and extrudes the filament through the hot end. The same goes for pressing the button when filament is loaded. It will detect whether there is filament, it'll heat up the hot end, and it will retract the filament. You can also edit these macros to your liking. I found that the default purge amount was a little bit excessive, so you can cut that down if you want to purge a little bit less filament when it automatically loads your material. Of course, it will also work as a filament runout sensor in that if filament runs out during a print, it pauses and unloads the little bit of filament left in the extruder. I'm normally not huge on filament runout sensors because I feel that they're kind of an afterthought, they're usually off to the side and kind of sort of work, but having this mounted right on top of the extruder like this, you forget that it's even a filament runout sensor, but with the addition of the macros, it just adds some really nice features to the orbiter extruder and the sort of the orbiter ecosystem. And that has been the Orbiter 2.0 and the Orbiter Runout Sensor. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions you had or maybe didn't have about the Orbiter and the Orbiter Sensor. It has just been such a treat to use. I'm, I'm definitely going to be picking up a couple more of both the Orbiter extruders and the sensors to go on future printer builds because I've just been enjoying it so much. If you have used the Orbiter, let me know in the comments down below what your experience has been like. I think from most people I've talked to that have used this, it's been overwhelmingly positive, but I'd love to know also if you've used it, what your experience has been like. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel, furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. 
Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Diana from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.